sneer on his upper lip, just a spot of egg on his chin, and an oily quiff that threw down a thrusting challenge to pubescent girls and the prevailing order. He's mellowed since he took over the leadership of the Liberal Democrats. But even today, there are women ready to throw their Zimmer frames in the air when they hear the name Peter Cook. <laughs> If, you, if you're not very, very careful, I'm going to do my Elvis underwater impression. Have you ever seen that? Elvis underwater? Will Bruce post to him with the rope? Goes on and on. It gets better. <laughs> you're, very, you're very, very hard to see behind that, that cloud of smoke. In fact, you're one of the very few people brave enough to smoke on television. Yeah, I, I regard it as a duty. It, 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 it takes a certain amount of uh, courage and pluck. Uh, and without boasting, um, it's a dangerous thing to do, smoking. I, I risk my life on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas if you climb Everest or go across the Antarctic barefoot, you know, people say you're very brave, which indeed you are, but you're also extremely foolish. But they, uh, <laughs> they get knighthoods and medals for that. Whereas I, smoking continuously, get no honors whatsoever. And I think <laughs> I think would be a very sensible promotional notion for Dunhill, say, to introduce a uh, Dunhill New Year's Honours list <laughs> for, uh, for responsible and decent and brave smokers. It, uh, the honours could be presented by, what, Princess Margaret or um, uh, Nicholas Ridley. Uh, you'd just be anointed with a very long silver cigarette holder. And um, I think it'd be nice, 84-year-old men, you know, with a fag in their mouth. Wearing the DSO, the Distinguished Smoking Order. The Distinguished yes. Smoking Order, yes. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was claimed this week uh, that uh, keeping a dog and running your fingers through its silky coat can reduce stress. Yes, well, not keeping a dog can also reduce stress. I, uh, <laughs> prob probably more so. I, I, I do have a few miniature dogs about my person at this very moment. Very, very <laughs> tiny little things, but they're... they're <laughs> They're just there to retrieve ash, in case I... <laughs> but uh, dogs suffer from stress, as you know. Um, some people say that a dog suffers less stress if it has, has an owner, but I doubt it. I think a dog is probably better off in the wild, in the wild, rooting around and <laughs> sniffing its counterpart. And, uh, whereas well, we don't do so much of that, unless you happen to be one of those... <laughs> what's he called? Iron John? <laughs> Robert Bly has a book about how men should discover their real manliness, their inner well of uh, primeval manliness. And literally, you can go on an Iron John weekend, which costs about 400 quid, and they strip naked in a cave and go around sniffing each other's bottoms. <laughs> and why not? <laughs> Better than sniffing your own, I think. Peter, do you take anything to relieve stress? Um, not really. I've, I've been on a bit of a health kick recently, um, and I've been experimenting with all these herbal, herbal drinks from health shops. Uh, you must know the ones. There's Purdy's, for example, and there's Aqua Libra, which is uh, Italian for free water. <laughs> it's not it free, costs about three quid a bottle, yes. <laughs> um, and uh, I've, uh, ginseng sling is rather good. Um, it is Peruvian herbs uh, mixed by a master blender in Utah and gives you what they call a natural high, relieves stress, and uh, it's also got the guarana in it. Guarana. Guarana, which is that wonderful root found only in the rainforest. And it is this particular drink which has made uh, Robert Redford so um, healthy and uh, tall. <laughs> Most commercial brands of anything are virtually identical, aren't they? Yes, and there's horrifying surveys. I mean, I'm, I'm something of a baked bean right. connoisseur. And uh, <laughs> I, I've, I've always enjoyed Heinz baked beans, uh, any ones. But all these uh, stores like Marks and Sparks, Safeway, Tesco and so on, they all have their in-house brand. And I read, I think it was in the Observer, marks out of ten about these in-house baked beans, rivals to Heinz. And would you believe it, Marks and Spencer's baked beans got two out of ten. Two out of ten. <laughs> which is, by any standard, uh, the implication is it's a pretty lousy bean. <laughs> uh, but you hear about Marks and Sparks, you, th you think putting their boil in the bag thing in the, uh, on, on the stove is the equivalent of getting Raymond Blanc round to cook you a meal. <laughs> but in the baked bean department, two out of ten. 
Now, if my wife had come in with some uh, Marks and Sparks baked beans in the past, I'd just eaten them up and not noticed. But now I've seen this survey. <laughs> Peter, you're a well-known connoisseur of television commercials. Has any of them been catching your eye recently? Oh, well, the Ghastly series, I think it's uh, nationwide, is it? Building Society. Building okay. Society. The one, it started off with this woman sounding like Meryl Streep, who said, uh, I dreamt I went to Africa. <laughs> Um, well, stay there. Uh, but no, she comes back and then she's at a Jewish wedding. Uh, I don't know why. Straight from Africa, a Jewish wedding. And then she's with a husband who she loves and adores. And nationwide building society. But there's a worse one they've done now, where there's this awful old man telling his son what to do in life. I know you will leave my home. You will go to foreign parts. You'll swim with the dolphins. <laughs> You'll dance with the squirrels. <laughs> You'll learn from older, wiser people. Shot of marriage, mooning at the queen. <laughs> but then you'll come home and be stuck with this mortgage. I mean, <laughs> I get a bit annoyed about the LucasAid one, the isotonic LucasAid with John Barnes. Uh -huh. I mean, isotonic means it's sweat. I mean, the equivalent. <laughs> it replaces fluids which you've got rid of during exercise. And uh, I mean, it's quite a good ad, and he's very pretty. And he kicks the, kicks the tin perfectly into a waste paper basket. Oh, why can't he do that with a football? <laughs> I mean, should they have a, a, a waste paper <laughs> basket in the opponent's gold mouth? I don't know. He's been training to do this stunt with LucasAid and uh, neglecting his natural skills. <laughs> You've got to admit that some of the products are worth pushing. Like, you know, think of how different your life would be without Ariel, for example. Well, Ariel, yes, but I can do my bit for the environment. That's why I buy Ariel. It's, it's, it's a tiny little packet. You wouldn't think it held so much. <laughs> You can recycle it, you can wash it, and you can wear it as a hat if you want. In fact, I think Princess Anne was wearing one at Ascot. Uh, and then they have a shot of this tiny little thing which washes so much, even more than the net Newman gets out of fairy liquid. I mean, and then she throws it away, doing her bit for the environment, into a gigantic bin, which you know is as large as most people's kitchens. So it's a completely fake shot. Uh -huh. But I'm, I'm, I've, I've been unfaithful to Radion, I'm sorry to say. 